And this napkin, I have it right in front of me, it's supposed to have the entire code base of, of Plutus, obviously in a summary format, but it's supposed to be able to fit on a napkin. And Charles said that in his AMA, and it's printed on gold here. So they fit the entire, they fit Plutus on a napkin. And this was the entire, I, I think you can sum up the conference by, by this. It looks so clean, and this is what's going to protect the smart contracts in the future for Cardano. So this is what the academics, all those papers being written to come up with this, this, this elegant piece of code right here. And I think that that was a great summation of, um, of, of Plutus Fest in general. But speaking about what um, Professor Wadler said, I wanted to ask Sebastian, wanted to segue to Sebastian because, you know, I'm not familiar with um, Solidity. You know, Solidity is the code that Ethereum developers use to build their smart contracts. But Professor Wadler was talking about how in Ethereum, you know, sometimes you have to know Solidity and in addition, you have to know Java because you're building like on-chain and off-chain solutions. So he was putting in a specific example of how one smart contract had like 81 lines written in Solidity and like I believe like 149 lines written in Java. So before I was under the assumption that developers only needed to know Solidity or be masters in Solidity, but it seems like the barrier to entry to become an Ethereum developer is even higher than we initially thought. Is that correct in that assumption or can you add anything to that? Yeah, I can add to that. So it's not Java, it's JavaScript. So JavaScript is the language you use for basically making websites. You don't have to use JavaScript to make websites, but it's the most popular programming language to create websites. And so you can imagine if you make a smart contract, for example, you're the author of CryptoKitties, right? You make your great CryptoKitties application, but then you, you need to create a way for people to interact with it, right? And that's what the CryptoKitties website is. So you go to the CryptoKitties website, you know, you start looking at the marketplace, find a cat that looks good, purchase it and all that. So somebody needs to create the UI experience that interacts with the smart contract backend. Okay. So if you look at the code for the CryptoKitties website, you'll see a lot of JavaScript code that's essentially calling the smart contract back and forth. Okay. And the problem that you have with this experience as a programmer, okay, is imagine you want to release a new version of your smart contract. You make some change, make some upgrade, and you want to swap it to a new version, make a version increase. Now you also have to make sure all your JavaScript code matches the new Solidity smart contract that is backing the application, right? Because if you imagine you change the backend, you change the Solidity code, and if you, you forgot to change the JavaScript, suddenly things will stop matching, right? You'll get a bunch of strange errors, the types didn't match, the data structure didn't match, and this is not a good user experience, right, as a developer. Because it just means that whenever you do an upgrade of your either your JavaScript code or your Solidity code, you have to be really careful about what changed and to make sure all everything still matches. Okay, so one of the problems they want to solve with, with Plutus is what if you just had one programming language that generates both of them? Okay, you write the program once and then it generates the code to put on the blockchain and it generates the code to put in your website. Okay. And now you have a much simpler experience because as a programmer, all you got to do when you want to release this new version is to change the one programming lang language, which is Plutus TX now. Okay. You make a change and then you press go, it compiles, and then you get two pieces of information. You put one of them on the blockchain, you put the other one on your website, and now you're good to go. You know, you've done a good job. And this is a much, simpler and a much safer way to do software upgrade. And so I thought this is a really good idea. This is actually a problem that not many people have really thought of trying to solve, uh, despite the fact that it's a common problem a lot of developers run into. And as they said in the conference, this is not a new problem in computer science, right? This happens all the time. For example, you have some sort of uh, C sharp application you want to connect to a database. You make a change to your database, but then now your C sharp code doesn't match anymore. You got to change the C sharp code, and you know make sure everything matches. Stuff like this is very common, and every time when you have this problem, people always create this kind of intermediate step that creates both of them, right? So they have some way of automatically generating code to make sure everything always matches. 
And I think it's only natural that we have this, this next step in smart contract development, where we also notice that there's this mismatch going on, and now we have a unified way of writing smart contracts that generates both paths. And this will be a natural step for developers to kind of make the smart contract authoring experience much easier. Right, so one thing people may not notice when they're not developers is that writing a smart contract is not the best developer experience. And the reason why is because if you think about programming languages that are well known, you know, Java, C++, C Sharp, all these well known programming languages, they've been around for a very long time, sometimes decades, right? And so they have a very rich, well understood user experience, right? You okay, you have this ID, we know this ID works, and we have all these known tools that work, and this experience that just works, that everybody's known for a very long time. Solidity and smart contract development is a very new experience, right? It's not something people have thought that much until fairly recently. And so there's still a lot of tooling that need to be done and a lot of questions that need to be answered. And I think Plutus is really helping to push us forward in that, that part of the field, right? Because I think a lot of people who write the tooling, they're, they're interested in making small incremental changes. They make the compiler 1% faster or, or, the compi or like the runtime 1% faster. But sometimes you need to come in and say, okay, we can get the 1% or we can do a, a pivot into this new strategy and that'll really push us forward. And I think that's kind of one of the things Plutus is aiming for. You know, Sebastian, one of my biggest takeaways um, during the Plutus Fest briefs related to that was uh, as a non-developer myself, non-programmer, I noticed that comparison that Philippe was talking about. Uh, they showed the, uh, the Solidity code and the JavaScript code, and there was a certain piece, and one of them runs on uh, on-chain and the other part runs off-chain. But what I noticed, the difference with the Plutus code, the two things that I learned during that particular part of the brief was Plutus is a subset of Haskell. So Haskell is the entire language, and Plutus is a subset of that. Did I get that part correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so I got that part correct. And what was even neater is instead of having these two chunks of code base, it was only one set of code, and then inside the actual Plutus software that was written, this was the demonstration they were given. giving, uh, there, there was the segment of code that runs off-chain, and there's the little piece of code that runs on-chain, just by using special characters to mark that part that runs on chain. And to me, it looked a lot more efficient and it was all in one piece. And uh, did you guys notice that as well? Did I catch that correctly? Yeah, I mean, so that's what I was talking about, right? So it's, it's a much easier experience as a software developer if you know all your code is just one file, okay? And you edit this one file and you make sure everything is working and you press compile and it gives you the two files, the on chain and the off chain. And that way you know there's no weird thing where the versions don't match. Everything's generated from the same source code. And actually this is not just important in Plutus, you know, as mentioned before that the database with C sharp, but another problem, or sorry, another platform that's trying to solve this problem is the K framework, right? So what is the idea behind the K framework? You know, when you create a new programming language, you don't want to create the compiler from scratch and then create the interpreter from scratch and then create the debugger from scratch. You should just have one language. You write your language in that, your, sorry, you write your new programming language in that one framework and then suddenly it, it generates all the tools for you. And this is a very powerful idea, right? Because it just saves so much engineering effort. And the cost savings are so high of not having this mental overhead of having to rebuild these all these tools, that it, it can enable a much more efficient pipeline. And you know, this philosophy kind of goes even further just in, for Cardano in general, right? Because if you can, if you imagine Cardano in the future, what will that look like? Well, one thing is that it will be a, in a decentralized mode, right? In the future, it'll not just be I, IOHK, it'll be many companies. And so your, your uh, company and you want to propose a change to Cardano. You say, okay, I think we need this new feature to enable this scenario my company needs, right? So that'll be the Cardano improvement proposals. How would you make a Cardano improvement proposal in such a way that everybody can agree on the meaning and everybody can generate their new clients based on the, the change that you're proposing? Well, the easiest way to do it would be make it a change in the spec. Okay, when you make a Cardano improvement proposal, 
you say okay here's our spec and I want to change this line to do this new thing okay and then every client you know the Haskell client the Rust client maybe a Scala client or whatever it ha there is in the future all they do is they take the spec crank the wheel generates the code and then they put that in their new client and that's it it just did all the work for them they generate the executable from the spec and that would be a great pipeline right because then we know all the clients are all conformant to the spec there's no some weird version mismatch and then when we go to launch the new version of cardano oh rust client doesn't agree with haskell client and then what do we do and we wouldn't have this problem anymore because everybody knows their code is just generated from the spec and this idea of generating code is super powerful and i think maybe people don't realize how much time this can save in in development right so for example Ethereum had a problem, I think maybe one month ago, two months ago, where they're trying to release a new version on their testnet, and they had a problem because they had one client that did not agree with the other client, and it caused a weird hard fork in their test cl client. And the end result is they had to postpone the version improvement by a few months. I think it was like three or four months they had to delay it by, because okay, we need time to you know improve our test suite, and do some more testing to figure out where the bug is, and then fix it, and make sure it matches. And there's a huge amount of effort that goes into this, right? And if Cardano in the future can say, okay, we just change the spec, everybody generates their code from the spec, everything matches, then it'll be much faster, right? We won't have to have this weird issue with all the hard forks and trying to figure out what went wrong. And so we can have this at the protocol level, but we can also enable engineers to have this at the smart contract development level, right? So when somebody writes a smart contract and they want to make a change to their smart contract, they don't have to worry about version changes and everything. It just works and everything is generated from this one file. There was also something I noticed in the code and maybe I read it wrong, but like at the very beginning of the Plutus um, software, it get, there's a version number. So when the compiler reads it or whatever reads it, it goes, oh, that version. So it knows the correct version that you're using for that smart contract. Is that correct? Is that what I saw in there? Yeah, so the version inside these uh, Plutus smart contracts is not the version of your smart contract that you're writing. It's the version of the programming language you're binding to. So for example, if you think uh, Ethereum, because this is a well-known problem, in Ethereum they have version upgrades ever so often. New versions of Solidity come out uh, fairly often, right? And of course we will have the same thing in Cardano. Right, every once in a while, we'll say, okay, we have a new version of, for example, Plutus. We've you know made it 5% faster or whatever improvement we come out with. And people will have to migrate to the new version. But obviously not all smart contract writers can upgrade their smart contract. You know, maybe I, I wrote my smart contract for version 1.0 and then version 2.0 is incompatible with my smart contract. And I don't have the engineering work to fix it. And I already uploaded my code to the blockchain, so I can't change it anyways, right? So we have, I mean, every blockchain that has smart contracts has this problem, right? And so the smart contract inside it specifies the version of the programming language that's used. That way, you know, 10,000 blocks from now, 100,000 blocks from now, a million blocks from now, your computer still knows which version of the language to use to compile the smart contract. Okay, and that ensures you have immutability throughout the history of the chain. That makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. And I think that you highlighted a very important point. And this, uh, this point of basically it's, it's, it's like a one size fits all. And they're, they're creating, Cardano is creating Plutus to try and decrease the barrier of entry for developers to develop smart contracts. And I think that's key. And when, Sebastian, you said that Imagine the cost savings. I mean, when we translate that to business, say an institution or a company wants to build a smart contract, not only are they going to have to have developers, um, like, for example, if it, if it took place in Ethereum, they'd have to have developers on site to continuously maybe update that smart contract because it may not be compatible with the latest versions of that blockchain. Or, you know, they may need to have... Um, person A develop in, 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 in this language and then also write it in JavaScript. There's a whole bunch of different issues with the second generation blockchain, Ethereum. And Cardano is trying to solve those issues and make this, make this coding process, make this development process a lot more simple. 
And I know you're hearing about Ethereum a lot, and it seems like we're bagging on Ethereum. But, you know, I, th- th- that's the standard right now for smart contracts. And I was at Plutus Fest, and when you observe people at Plutus Fest, all the academics, I, would, I made a video about this, and I basically said that all those academics that were speaking, they're blockchain agnostic. What does that mean? They just want to find the best solution out there. You know, say you're a runner, you know, you like to run, you know, you just want to find the best running shoe out there. You know, if you're going to choose like an ASIC shoe or Sassoni shoe, or you're going to go buy a Reebok shoe and hurt your feet. That's what Ethereum is right now. And, you know, I know you're going to put some hate in the comments about that, but it is what it is. The people, the academics, they're not worried about the price. They're not worried about when ADA is going to moon or Ethereum is going to moon. You don't see them in the Telegram group talking about that. They just want to build on the best possible blockchain. And Cardano is providing those solutions. So when we're saying things or critiques about Ethereum, it's because it's true. It is true. So, um, you know, next time, come to Plutus Fest next year, listen to the academics talk, and they'll be able to explain it in a better way for you to understand exactly the solutions that Cardano is seeking in order to better the experience for developers.